Okay, I have been meaning to make a video on electrogravitics for a long time now, but uh, I have been delayed by extramural pursuits. Um, so, <laughs> right, so I am assuming people who are going to watch this video are familiar with Thomas Downson Brown and Thomas Vallone and Paul Laviolette. So I'm not really adding anything new here, but what I am. Um, what I had found kind of strange is that these people who are attempting to, to replicate these findings don't seem to have uh, the research funds to actually apply the proper dielectrics. And um, there's a guy in Argentina that I'm friends with on Facebook and I communicated with, and he, he realized that you have to use these high-K dielectrics, and this is something that Thomas Vallone is well aware of, but for some reason a lot of these replications, um, the only person I know right now that's trying to replicate any kind of electrogravitic phenomena under the name quantized inertia to kind of give it some mainstream credibility uh, is a guy named Mike Bukulik at Plymouth University. The problem is that he's using symmetric plates and that's retarded because you have to use asymmetric plates because that's the whole principle behind it. So there's a Japanese researcher whose name escapes me who's got a whole lot of uh, work published on this. He developed an equation to actually predict the amount of force developed by one of these. So I'm in the process of buying some barium uh, strontium titanate uh, sputtering targets. These are uh, these are basically little um, uh, little plates, and I got a 50 kilovolt DC power supply coming. Uh, so if all goes well, I should be able to get some thrust. Um, this guy in Argentina got some thrust with a pretty crappy dielectric aluminum oxide. Uh, according to the equation, if you use cal calcium copper calcium copper titanate, or I, I don't remember. Yeah, it's, I think it's calcium copper titanate. That can get up to 300,000 uh, dielectric relative to air. So at that point, you're 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 uh, you're, you're levitating. Uh, and the problem is that if this com this comes out, uh, it's likely to be uh, the government will likely um, uh, seize the facility, right? And I'm 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 perfectly willing to accept that risk, right? Um, the government will likely seize the facility and and seize all of the uh, and, and keep it secret because. It's simply far too disruptive to society if if we have uh i mean we're, we're, the propulsion system we have is from the stone age <laughs> we're, we're we're gushing stuff behind us right we're paddling it's retarded right you just you just cancel your own gravitational uh, acceleration by reducing the mass basically which is because gravity is electric gravity is electromagnetic and it can be shielded so um i have a theory of gravity which is basically that you have a 50% distribution of positive and negative, but there's always a slight surplus of either positive or negative, so there's this mutual attraction. Uh, and matter mutually attracts, and it's the inverse square, not the inverse cube. So it follows Coulomb's law. It's the inverse square. The electric field is the inverse square of distance, exactly what gravity is. So gravity is electric, and they've been using special relativity. They've been using Einstein and all the all that bullshit, all that garbage, you know, space-time bending to keep electrogravitics su suppressed. We know the Germans had this technology, but it was kept kept black. Uh, but it's coming out, right? With the internet, you have people like Thomas Vallone, you have people like Paul Laviolette who are doing amazing work, and they are exposing this conspiracy. Uh, Paul Laviolette has been told uh, he's some of his patents have been have been have been scraped, or not not his patents, but he said that the patent examiners will actually the government will ask patents basically to to, to they'll, they'll request patents go go black. Um, so. You know, we see the UAP uh, report coming out very recently, so so things are getting uh, things are getting very exciting. Um, you know, I, I think uh, there are very very few researchers in this field, and obviously my goal is to, is to be is to be you know one of them. Um, but this guy in Argentina is definitely a person that uh, I will cite as inspiration. Had I not seen his work, had I not seen the formula that this Japanese guy developed, uh, it certainly would have not uh, been possible. Uh, the, what I have is I have the money. A little bit of money at least. I'm going to buy these barium strontium titanate sputtering targets, uh, barium strontium titanate, uh, and uh, and we're going to give give it a little voltage. So, uh, you know, again, we'll try to get pretty much close to the dielectric breakdown of the material, which is extraordinarily high, and and off we go. We'll, we'll be able to, to levitate one of these things. So the goal is to be able to initially build one that can levitate, uh, and then once it, it levitates, of course. But again, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think the public will see it because. When, when I upload this to YouTube, uh, you know, again, it's going to be highly disruptive because uh, again, no one's done this. People have keep people keep wasting their time with these silly little uh, 
you know, um, Bifeld, Bifeld Brown lifters, which are which are mainly ionic wind. Okay, the Israelis tried putting those things in a vacuum, and and it and it they didn't generate any thrust. On the other hand, everybody knows, okay, that in the black bro black uh, black projects, they have high K dielectric, barium strontium titanate, or even calcium calcium copper titanate, and they're applying very very high voltages, and they're getting enough mass because we know the B2 simply doesn't have the thrust to weight ratio is all screwy. Okay, there's something going on with that aircraft. Um, you know, everybody and everybody who's smart knows that, right? Paul Laviolette isn't exactly some, you know, you know, some plumber, right? Okay, you know, he's 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 highly qualified, uh, and so so yeah, basically this is where we're at. I was shocked to find nobody's actually because my friend in, uh, in Argentina, he doesn't even have Barry and Stratton Titanate. He doesn't have the money to to to, to buy one, uh, and in fact, the uh, the um, there was one guy I found who was trying to make it out of powder. He didn't have the money to buy an actual sputtering target, right? And so it's going to be pretty funny to see what happens, see what the military does. Uh, you know, obviously people have been killed doing this uh, because, and I don't actually have evidence, people, I suspect people have been killed. And if you look at, for example, what happened to uh, Thomas Townsend Brown, he just disappeared, right? What, what happened to him? It, it completely went black. Um, you know, my theory is Area 51 is, is being used as a, it, you know, the physical presence of alien, I think, is, is being used as a cover for electrogravitics. I mean, this is my theory. It's actually electrogravitics that they're hiding there, but they just know that it's so disruptive to society and the state, because the state power structure ceases to exist once you have levitating crafts, right? You could literally take off out of your backyard, you can accelerate to extraordinarily high speeds, and of course, for intergalactic uh, uh, travel, these things, you know, are going to allow 10%, 20%, maybe 50% speed of light travel, and that's just too disruptive. It allows people to make weapons. It allows people to fight new kinds of wars. It, 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 it the power structure as we know it, uh, the United States won't be able to be on top because what it means is the Chinese will get it, the Russians will get it, other powers will get it. It just disrupts everything. They will kill to keep this secret. So we have to be very careful. Uh, certainly, you know, if they do come to your house and say, "Hey, stop doing this." You know, comply because we don't want to get killed. But at the same time, it's going to come out, right? It's just a matter of time. The Stone Age propulsion is coming to an end. A new age is coming, and that's electrogravitics. So I had this idea. So w once we have a, a an electrogravitics system, which we do, it already exists, right? It's just the civilians can't can't access it because it's it's being suppressed by the government, right? <laughs> um, so it's not like you know, if you have this idea like, oh, I've discovered something. No, 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 we haven't discovered anything. I, I'm just lucky enough to have some resources to be able to try to test this, and I'm 100% certain it's going to work because I know the government's using it. The question now becomes, well, what's the ideal way to get electricity to power this thing? So at the end of the day, you still can't, can't violate the first law. You still need uh, an energy source, right? Unless you believe in free energy, which I don't, right? You're, you're, you're destroying mass with electricity because electricity, gravity is electricity, so it's the reciprocal, the converse, right? It's like um, use light to make electricity with a with solar panel, or you can use electricity to make light with a, with a laser. Uh, so what we're doing here is what we're, we're uh, we need a fuel source, and so the fuel source would be boron, hydrates, uh, B5H9 or pentaborane 9 This was investigated by the Air Force back in the 60s, uh, back in the late 50s under the ZIP fuel program. Uh, boron hydrates have a higher heat of combustion than uh, conventional uh, hydrocarbons uh, in the order of 50, in excess of 50%. So the uh, lower heat of combustion of uh, B5H9 pentaborane is 67.76. 67 megajoule per kilogram, and uh, JP4 is uh, mil spec JP4 is like 43, just a bit under 43, like 42 point something. So you're looking at about a 60% increase in energy density, and then you can use something like an adiabatic diesel engine, or you can use a gas turbine to burn that fuel, produce a heat, uh, generate electricity, uh, and, uh, and and power a, hi a high voltage power supply. It's going to be something like a 50 kilovolt uh, DC power supply. You have all sorts of advances in microelectronics, which make this even lighter than than was the case back, you know, in the 50s. You have uh, silicon carbide uh, thyristor, or uh, silicon carbide uh, um, rectifiers, or um, you can, uh, or you can just have a, uh, a commutator on, on your on your on your motor on your generator. Uh, because I, I no one's ever told me whether DC or AC is ideal. I, th I think it's DC, right? You don't want a waveform. Uh, it looks like you want to use DC because that's the best way to actually. Well, my theory is that you're stripping, you're basically stripping uh, 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 atoms, right, of, of of some of their some of their charge, and that's producing a temporary reduction in mass. Again, that's my theory. Some people view it as as uh, some kind of acceleration uh, of electricity, but uh, but either way, again, I'm not a theoretician. I'm more of a uh, 
of, of just an ex uh, um, experimentalist, and so we will have to have to see. But either way, uh, when this thing arrives, and it hasn't arrived yet, um, we're just going to stack them up, put a little electric at the top, a little electric at the top, big electric at the bottom. Take a scale. We can take a, uh, a not a digital scale, so we don't get any electromagnetic interference. And voila, you you should be able to get some thrust. I mean, again, this guy in Argentina has already gotten thrust, so it's not like we're waiting for some new result. But certainly, um, certainly, this is uh, this is going to happen.